Astrology with Squidward was a series of short segments that aired on Nickelodeon in the year 2000. In these shorts, Squidward tentacles explained different aspects of the Zodiac during various times of the year. The characters from SpongeBob SquarePants were used to represent the Zodiac symbols, with SpongeBob as Sagittarius and Patrick as Taurus. Mr. Krabs' sandals and two ambulance fish also appeared as Cancer, Pisces, and Gemini. The shorts initially aired on Nickelodeon's main network in the year 2000, but were later shown on Nicktoons from 2002 to 2005. Due to the limited availability of recording television and online information at the time, there were rumors and speculations about missing segments and variations of the shorts. Popular rumors suggested the existence of two additional shorts featuring Squidward as a Libra and Pearl as a Virgo, but these rumors turned out to be false, supported only by anonymous Wikipedia users. There were also rumors of shorts for Aquarius, Capricorn, Aries, and Scorpio, which would complete the entire Zodiac. However, the only source for this rumor was a German Nickelodeon Wikia page on the series. In 2019, new information surfaced when a user named Candy Katie on Encyclopedia Spongebobia added details about a closing scene in a 2005 Nickelodeon Germany promo for Spongebob Squarepants. The scene showed Squidward wearing his turban in Spongebob's house, and it appeared to be from a programming block called Spongebob's Nicktoon Summer Splash that aired during the summers of the year 2000 and 2001. This discovery increased the possibility of more segments existing, although it wasn't fully confirmed due to the clip's low animation quality and limited details. But then Vincent Waller, a prominent figure associated with Spongebob Squarepants, confirmed on April 8th, 2019 that no other shorts existed apart from the ones already available online. Cuffed Together is a pilot episode that was never produced for the animated series The Angry Beavers on Nickelodeon. It was rumored to have aired uncommonly worldwide but never in the United States. The official pilot episode of the series titled Snowbound was uploaded to YouTube in 2013. Following its discovery, rumors began circulating about a possible second pilot episode called Cuff Together. Since Snowboard was initially just a rumored episode before its release, some people believe that Cuff Together also exists but remains lost. Interestingly, on June 26, 2001, a fanfiction titled Cuff Together was submitted by a user on the Toon Zone forums. The story's plot aligns with what is believed to be in the rumored pilot episode. This person even mentioned the existence of Snowbound and he claimed to have screenshots from Cuff Together back in 2001. This suggests that there may have been awareness of the pilot's existence, making it unlikely that the fanfiction matched the unknown episode. Additionally, there is an official episode titled The Postside Dam Adventure that shares similarities with Cuff Together, so it's possible that the rumor happened because people misremembered the former episode. There have been claims from individuals in Latin America who said they have watched both episodes on the local equivalent of the American Nicktoons network. However, these claims lack verification and originated from fan sites, which are known to be unreliable sources. There were also claims that Cuff Together was screened before the movie The Best Christmas Pageant Ever in certain theaters. Neither Mitch Shore, the show's creator, nor Mitchell Whitfield, the voice actor for Norbert in Snowbound, have mentioned the existence of an additional pilot for the series. There is also a photo that mentions Cuff Together possibly being shown on a Splat Game show, suggesting that the pilot may have been presented to the public. But then the episode was confirmed fake by YouTuber L Supersonic Q in a tweet. Additionally, the writers and creators of The Angry Beavers have never seen the episode. The Mystery of Goody Land is an episode from the 2005 Doraemon anime series. For the US adaptation of this series titled Doraemon Gadget Cat from the Future, the episode was slated to be dubbed in English as Adventures in Candyland. This special 30 minute episode, which typically consisted of two 15 minute segments for US airings, was supposedly scheduled to premiere on August 28, 2015. However, despite being listed in early TV guides, this episode did not actually air. There were rumors that Disney ABC Television Group had concerns about the episode potentially promoting excessive use of sweets among children, but these claims remain unconfirmed. Instead, the episode was swapped with another episode titled Gone with the Sneeze. During a live stream on September 25th, 2017, Kaiji Tang, the US voice actor for Jian, made a guest appearance. When asked about this particular episode, Tang revealed that no recording had taken place for it, suggesting that Disney likely decided to remove it from the dubbing process. City 2000 is a point-and-click adventure game for DOS that features puzzles. It was developed by Roller Game and released in 1993 by Adidas Inc. In the game, players assume the role of John Daring, who is an American secret agent tasked with stopping the nefarious drug lord S. Ruder from gaining control over London. The game employs a classic inventory system and incorporates live-action cutscenes. While City 2000 itself is not that rare and can be purchased on platforms like eBay and Amazon, the same cannot be said for its sequel City 2000 Paris, released the following year. Copies of the sequel were not available on any abandoned war sites or trading and selling platforms. There were also no dedicated websites that documented the existence of the sequel. The main evidence of its existence comes from the mention of the sequel on the back of the City 2000 game box, stating that it's coming soon. The game was also listed in the CD-ROMs and print catalog published by Gale Group. 
There were also rumors suggesting that 30 pre-release copies of the sequel were sent to a Canadian store with minimal packaging, but these claims were not confirmed. Little information can be found about the two companies involved in the game's development. Roller Game has been associated with the creation of three games, City 2000 for PC, Castellion for NES, and Dream TV for SNES. While Edidas was a publisher based in Montreal, since City 2000 Paris is a sequel to an already obscure game, the efforts of collectors to locate it have been unsuccessful. However, on September 21st, 2021, John Stewart, a developer involved in the creation of the original City 2000 game, revealed why the sequel was never made. According to Stewart, French law required the developers to obtain permission from every individual appearing in the game's photos, which ultimately prevented the production of its sequel. Croc 3 Stone of the Gobbles was an alleged video game sequel to the Croc series by Argonaut Software. It was supposedly in development from 2001 to 2005 until the rights went to ZeniMax instead of Jez Son. According to reports, Argonaut Software intended to release Croc 3 as the final installment of the series. The game was planned for PlayStation, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox, directly continuing the storyline from Croc 2. In this installment, Croc would face Baron Dante once again to save the Gobbos. The game was designed with fully explorable hub worlds to cater to younger players, much like Spiral Year of the Dragon. Notably, on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox versions, there were plans to include an optional two-player mode with the second player controlling a new character named Ginger. The development of Croc 3 began in 2001 when Argonaut Software split into three teams. One of these teams consisting of only 10 members focused on creating this one game. Consequently, the project underwent numerous changes. For instance, the original voice actor for Croc declined to reprise the role, leading to a recasting. The team also encountered challenges with an unstable version of the in-house engine called Brender, which also powered other Argonaut games like Malice. However, this version was an exclusive updated iteration aimed at pushing the four consoles to their limits. Initially, the game was planned for Dreamcast, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox, and PC but it was eventually scaled down to just PlayStation, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox platforms. The development of the PlayStation version of Croc 3 took longer because the team decided to use an older version of Brender. The newer version of Brender was not actually compatible with the PlayStation's graphics capabilities. The team wanted the PlayStation version to have the same graphics as Croc 2 to maintain consistency within the trilogy on that console. The plan was to release the game in 2005, possibly only on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. However, Argonaut closed in 2004 leading to the sale of the Croc IP to ZeniMax Media Incorporated. Mad Duck Productions on ZeniMax was also supposed to continue development on Croc 3, but the game faced difficulties and was eventually cancelled. Former Argonaut employees who worked on Croc 3 shared information about the game with Unseen 64. One employee intended to leak a very early playable prototype of the PlayStation 2 version, but the founder of Argonaut rejected it. This employee also said that he was only able to leak information and nothing more because of ZeniMax's strict cease and desist policies. However, it was later revealed on Unseen 64 that the provided information about the cancelled Croc 3 was fake. Claims such as the game being cancelled because of ZeniMax owning the Croc IP turned out to be false. Developer Storybox confirmed that they had been in contact with Jez Son, the co-producer of the original games, who stated that he still owned the Croc IP. Old Classic Gamer, a member of the Unseen 64 community, shared an interesting discovery. He reached out to Bethesda Works, a division of ZeniMax Media, and received an email response that shed more light on the matter. The email explicitly stated that ZeniMax did not even possess the rights to the beloved Croc franchise. This also served as solid evidence against the developer's claims about the cease and desist. So overall, all we have of this game is one screenshot, and it's most likely that the game didn't even make it that far in development. 